so today I am going to talk about special unitary groups and uh, I will briefly introduce their concepts and it's very important in particle physics so for this let us consider a diagram it's like this means uh, let me first of all consider the uh, axis coordinate axis and suppose a disk is rotated in xy plane about z axis so suppose there is some point this point xy and when it rotated clockwise means it's, it rotates clockwise then this point seems to be somewhere here after some time it is the x prime y prime and it makes an angle theta that's what will happen so that means when disk is rotated along z axis then x y after rotation through angle phi uh, seems to be at point x prime and y prime now what is the relationship between x and y so let me write down that that x prime is equal to means x prime is equal to x cos phi plus y sin phi <coughs> and y prime is equal to minus x sin phi plus y cos phi and it can be written in the matrix form so that means I can write down these two equations collectively as x prime y prime is equal to cos phi minus sin phi sin phi and cos phi <coughs> and this is x and phi let me call it as equation number one so right this is a brief introduction that how transformation changes the system so now let us now define a orthogonal matrix I am basically recapitulating few things from the matrix algebra and the group theory so let us now define orthogonal matrix and then I will try to look at this transformation matrix because this is known as transformation matrix this is the transformation matrix so let us now define orthogonal matrix orthogonal matrix so a real matrix a real matrix is termed as orthogonal if transpose if it's transpose if it's transpose is equal to its inverse so let me try to look at it mathematically so mathematically what should I do I can write down that transpose of s is equal to means s is some matrix if its transpose is equal to its inverse or I can write down it as the s and st it is equal to I means identity matrix or I can write down is ST or S is equal to an identity matrix in any way we can write down it as right so let us try to look at this matrix now let us call this matrix as S and let me check whether it is orthogonal or not so S is equal to what s is equal to cos phi sin phi minus sin phi 
and the cos phi this is the matrix two by two order matrix so what is its transpose its transpose is cos phi minus sin phi and it is sin phi and the cos phi i have changed the rows in the columns right so let me try to find out the, now sst their product means this thing i want to evaluate so if i evaluate it then what i am getting means first row multiplied with the first column so it is cos square phi plus sin square phi then first row second column so it is cos phi minus sin phi plus sin phi and the cos phi and here it is minus sin this is minus this is uh, sorry first row first column so it is sin phi so it is sin phi and cos phi then plus cos phi and sin phi and here it is this is minus this is minus this, this will become positive so it is sin square phi plus cos square phi so these will cancel out with this and this is equal to 1 and this is also equal to 1 so i can write down it as 1 0 0 1 means it is a identity matrix this is a identity matrix <coughs> so therefore i can call it as that S is orthogonal orthogonal matrix <coughs> uh, let me try to check it its determinant so if I try to find out its determinant means if the determinant of orth orthogonal matrix is unity then means if determinant of orthogonal matrix is unity I call it as I call it as special orthogonal matrix special orthogonal matrix so for that let us do one thing let us try to find out determinant of s so s is what s is cos phi sin phi minus sin phi and the cos phi and if i try to find out its determinant then it can be written like it is cos square phi and it is plus sin square phi so it's again one so that means and s is a 2 by 2 matrix it is orthogonal and its determinant is equal to 1 so such a matrix is called special orthogonal matrix special orthogonal matrix of order 2 that is it is represented like this right so this is one thing what which i talked about similarly if s is a matrix of order n by n and st is equal to s inverse or s is equal to or sst is equal to i so that means means it is it is orthogonal and it's determinant is unity that is unimodular then such a matrix is called 
special unitary matrix of order n that is s o n right so here i talked about special unitary sorry special orthogonal matrix of sorry not special unitary but it is a special orthogonal about unitary i will talk about later on right so it is special orthogonal matrix of order n so let me now talk about another important thing that is unitary matrix unitary matrix so let us for this proceed as follows so a matrix is said to be unitary a matrix is said to be unitary set to be unitary if u dagger is equal to u inverse u dagger means we have taken its complex conjugate and then its transpose this is the meaning of it right so what this indicate this indicate that u dagger u is equal to i or you can write down is u u dagger 1 and same thing then such a matrix is said to be a unitary matrix uh, now if in addition to it if determinant of u is equal to 1 means if determinant is unity means it is unimodular then also if the order of u will be n by n then this matrix is called is called special unitary matrix matrix of order n that is s u n another important thing if determinant of u it will be equal to 0 then what does it mean let me talk about that that's very important concept which is used later on so So as we know that determinant of u will be equal to 1 this is additional thing which I am going to talk about here if determinant of u is equal to 1 that means determinant of u dagger is also equal to 1 so that means determinant of u and determinant of u dagger is again 1 what does it mean the determinant of u its mod square is always 1 right so therefore it's if I represent determinant of u is equal to e raised to power iota theta it's if I represent it in this way then determinant of u and determinant of u dagger it automatically comes out to be one right so that means there is another way to look at the unitary matrix so such that it can be represented like this the e raised to power iota theta like form right this we have to keep in mind right so this will help us in the later on lecture so i think uh, that's all for today's lecture so in today's lecture i will talk about two things one is the unitary matrix sorry one is the special orthogonal matrix and another is the special unitary matrix another definition is the special unitary 
matrix right so that's all for this lecture